socialist in economics. Hey, listen, okay. <laughs> Forget yeah, you, you, don't, you don't have to understand anything if you just destroy, destroy the economy. If there's no economy to understand, you understand it all. I think I think it's I think there needs to be a very important distinction between like what different socialists mean when they talk about the economy, right? Because I would consider myself a socialist, but I very much care about economics. Like there's a big distinction between like changing the means of production and changing the mode of production. Like there are definitely like some communists and socialists who advocate for changing the mode of production or like having a command economy or th stuff like well, that. I, I I suppose you meant like ownership of the means of production, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like changing the means of production, that's just like innovation. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like changing the, yeah, the, changing the ownership industry. of the means of production. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, so like if everybody or, or like if everybody or like the vast majority of people were in a co-op, I would say that's like socialism, right? But there, but there are some socialists who would disagree with that. That's fine. I just, that's not what I advocate for. You I mean, say the majority of people or all people? Uh, like I would say the vast majority. I mean, yeah, I, I, I would I would say I would prefer a hundred percent. But like if 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 we get as close as we possibly can, I think the other problems will disappear that I'm trying to solve yeah. anyway. I, so yeah, I generally agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, calling that so there's the it, this question of when you talk about a political system or an economic system, are you talking about? Like what I'm, layer are you talking about? Like yeah, I'm talking about, about I'm talking about how the economy is actually how the economy is actually structured, or yeah, I'm talking about socialism. I'm talking about socialism, yeah, the economic system, right? Like not uh, not necessarily like the other political things that people put into it. I mean, I I will make like the political or like the moral arguments, uh, or like so like yeah. so think of it this way: you could have in in a let's say fair capitalist um, system, you could it could happen to be that everyone ends up in in a completely democratic worker commune whatever sure. um just by choice would you call that socialist or capitalist or does it even uh socialist I, I would say I, I would say i would say whenever whenever i that this is a distinction i make personally because i think it's it's much more useful to talk about it in this way i would say when a country is moving towards a higher democratization of like the um sort of the means of production uh, either through like um, like democratic states uh, or like democratic governing bodies uh, owning them or like workers owning them themselves through like worker co-ops, which I think is preferable. I would say they are moving towards like socialism, like or a socialist yeah, society. I think you could say that's like a de facto, like that's like de facto socialism, but like there really ought to be like in a social society, like an assertion, like a, a protection of like the right of workers to like their autonomy. Like, yeah, not so just, like, not, just so happens nothing. that there isn't, like, any like, capitalist, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, I'm, like, like you say, imagine that there isn't any such mechanism. Like, in this society, there is nothing in particular that stops people from starting, you know, privately owned companies. Um, and it just so happens that, like, very, very few people do that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think at that point you're just talking about like incentive structures, right? I I, I think that right now uh, and the way that the economy has evolved through, I would say, less democratic means over time, um, like worker co-ops and stuff like that, has been heavily de-incentivized. Um, and I I guess I like I would just I would just I would just try to I guess right those wrongs. Like I I wouldn't necessarily like force every single company to become like a co-op. Um, if that makes sense, like I would just, I would just change the incentive structure to make it like either as preferable as starting like a private company or even like slightly more preferable because I believe the outcomes are better. And I believe that there is like data to support that. Which incentives are incentivizing like or disincentivizing co-ops? Yeah. Right so, so something like loans or, or uh, like the people who are able to start a co-op. Uh, like you, you, you're always going to need like some form of capital and like private investors and banks and stuff are heavily disincentivized from like supporting co-ops in general, especially like private investors. It, um, it's in part, it's in part because like they don't understand that type of like business model. Yeah. Uh, but also in part that like the rich people, like they have the money. So why would they want to like give up like control of that money to like other people? Right. Like, like it, 
like most people don't have like the capacity to start these businesses presently because of like the distribution of like of wealth and the ones that do wouldn't want to like share it with everyone else so it kind of it's kind of like a snowball at that point but i mean why but i don't see what the disincentive is for investing in in worker co-ops in per, per se I mean, I expect a lot of it is like ideological, right? That like they they just don't like conceive like they can't like conceive of these things as like being like reliable, like stable business models. Like maybe they irrational. think that like it's workers on behalf of on behalf of investors. I, I mean, I'm not in their head, but like I mean, there's there's a lot of different things. Well, like like you, you will have you will there. you will ultimately have like less ownership uh, to to sort of uh, of the company to sort of hand out. Uh, or like you'd have to dilute the shares even further uh, if you're like in a Voca co-op versus like that, that would be irrational prejudice. Like, right? like, like, the, the, like these people like in like, are like very wealthy or in like positions of power. Like often they have like this notion that like they got to where they are because like they're exceptional. And if they're exceptional, like that they're exceptional relative to like most workers. And if so, then what does that say about like the viability of something that's in the hands of those workers, right? So I, like the, these people, it seems like are kind of like in a position to think that those things necessary co-ops would not work just because like most people are dumb. You mean the people who start the companies? No, the people that would be in a position to loan to to invest in these co-ops. Don't want to do so because they want to believe that what individual people single-handedly build companies? No, that, that they think like exceptional people are the reason that like companies succeed or that like anyone gets anywhere. Okay, so you're saying that they would make more money if they invested in co-ops? Uh, very they, possibly, yes. I haven't looked at the data myself, but I've heard like they are, um, that co-ops are more like resilient to like uh, market fluctuations, stuff like that. Uh, than like traditional firms uh, that mainly the thing impeding them is like that they have like so much more of a um, impediment to like starting up in the first place. And possibly that is like selecting so that for like only the better prejudice businesses. Prejudice on the behalf of investors. Like the, it would be in the investor's interest to invest in these co-ops because the investors would make more money. But like, like capitalists, I, I like in like not not even necessarily liberal, but like like a capitalist ideology of like of like how they like justify like that they earned like everything that they got like kind of in disincentivizes them from like believing that ever, that the that co-ops could work. But I mean, investors just want to make return on their investment. But they have to believe that there is some return to be gotten. Well, that's a fact of, of whether there's a return. Like it ends up being a fact, so that they're just looking for anything to delegate. I mean, you assume that they're like that. perfectly rational, and which I, well, I feel is like, it, well, they're trying to be, but like, I, I think it's rather silly when you look at like all the things that like happen in a capitalist economy to think that everyone's like perfectly rational, making like excellent choices all the time. Well, no one assumes that everyone's perfectly rational, but the point is. I mean, investors who are more rational will make more money. Because that's what we mean by rational. We mean the rational, rationally able to pursue, you know, higher returns. So if if co-ops generate higher returns, then you would expect to see at least some investors figure that out and start well, putting that, money into them and making more money and getting rich. Well, generate higher returns for who? Because like outside like outside investors can only ever loan to them and just like get returns on a loan they can't ever get ownership of the co-op well whatever it is i mean if it generates if they get more money back than they put in then that's that's all investors are looking for in the end i mean i mean it's very easy to put more money in that you or get more money out than you put in but the question is just how much like what is the most efficient way to spend? well yeah yeah, they're looking for a return that beats, you know, other yeah, returns return. that are yeah, available yeah. to them. So, I mean, if if it's true that co-ops generated a better return than than the other, op, you know, private non-co-op companies, then you would expect to see 
at least some, some investor somewhere figured that out and start. I mean, sure. I mean, and I'm probably, I'm, I mean, there are, right? I mean, I mean, we, we are currently like for, like for the worker co-op that I have, like we're, we're talking to investors and, and stuff. And like, I mean, we present this case, but like a lot of, a lot of them have never invested in like a co-op before. Or I don't know, like the mechanisms, uh, like like many people don't even consider like worker co-ops because they're so um, niche, like for a be- like for a better word, right? Um, but I mean, there's a huge industry of people who are just always looking for things to invest money in, like this are full-time sure. job just doing research. Yeah, but there are there are just there are just not that many worker co-ops, like. And also, just because, there would be more. Like, are you saying the reason just, there are more is because no one wants to invest in them? No well, investment. yeah, yeah, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, uh, like at some it point, is, you... but, but it's also a self-fixing process, right? Like, it could seems... be. Yeah, it could be. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying, be. I'm not saying it, it couldn't be. Like, I, like, I'm not, like, I think the biggest barrier to worker co-ops is just people not doing them or, or like uh, trying to do them, because like it's, it's very much possible to do them right now. I think the biggest barrier is just people don't believe in them. If people are trying to do them. Uh, like I mean, the, the people, the some, people that have the security to start the to start something like that are not the people that have the 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 motivation to start something like that. Like it seems to me that everything has is has been in place for worker co-ops for that chicken and egg process to take off. Like the idea of worker co-ops has been around a long time. You've had you have a huge industry of you know very smart people looking for places to put capital. For a very long time like what is holding the the explosion in popularity of, of worker co-ops um I, I i don't have a source on this right now but i'm pretty sure that banks historically have not offered uh as preferential loans to like worker co-ops um just but why because they're untraditional like the business plan is untraditional but banks are are sent are just like in other investors right they're just sure. looking for the safest best you know the best return I mean, I, so, I, I would, lo- I would love. Again, to- if, if you're saying that the banks are being ir- irrational in their prejudice against worker co-ops, what is sustaining that that irrational prejudice when they could be making more I- money? ideology? Yeah, but it, but the, you would expect to see like at least one bank figure out, hey, if we let go of this irrational prejudice, we can make more money, and then that that would be a very profitable bank since they'd be making more money off it. Like, sure. We, there's all these other all these other innovations in. I mean, listen, 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 like, 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 sure, sure. So, so under, so under like uh, slavery and like, uh, like uh, Jim Crow or whatever, like you could say, well, wouldn't it be rational to serve black people? You would make more money. And I would say, well, yeah. So why aren't people doing it? And I would say, well, I mean, I don't know. (laughs) Why are people not serving black people if they would make more money doing so? I mean, um, maybe, I mean. So in that case, I guess maybe the, like, in the cases, I mean, we want to see, you know, how, how often was that? Was there some sort of perverse incentive that was incentivizing to not serve black people? Maybe. Uh, it might be that maybe their other customers didn't want to sit next to black people or something. So. Sure. But like, so if there's, if there's like a hundred, like that, but that didn't change. Like if there was like a hundred black people, like, um, who you could serve and like have them as your primary customers, like they, they still didn't do that. Right. It wasn't just a. It wasn't because there wasn't enough black people. They just didn't. I mean, how big were these businesses? Were these like tiny little mom and pop restaurants? What? No. Like, was there there any sort of big corporation or something that was like literally? Well, we definitely could make more money by serving black by not being racist, but we are going to sacrifice that money because we, as a large corporation, really want to be racist, or investors want to be racist, or something. I mean, I. I mean, I don't. I don't don't have. and the, the thing is that like co-ops aren't really like they're not like far and above like more productive than like like traditional like firms. Yeah. They're, they're like about on par and like maybe a little more stable, but maybe that's like just because they're selected for uh, like the better ones because like they have like higher like barrier to entry. But like ultimately, the argument for them isn't that like they're so much more productive; it's that they're more moral. Just in the same way that like the argument for ending slavery wasn't that like black people could be more productive if they were free citizens; it was that slavery was wrong. In the same yeah. way, socialists say that wage labor is fundamentally wrong. Okay, so but this this is that's counter. That's a different idea than than saying that there are. Yeah. So like. Sure, I, so I, that, 
like our argument has never really been that like co-ops are like far and away like way more productive such that like it should be like obvious to anyone that like tries to invest in them at one point that like this well, is what they should be investing we, in we started with the claim that there were economic disincentives to to starting up no, yeah, yeah, just just to be completely clear about my argument, like I'm, I'm never trying to argue that co-ops are like much more successful. Like the bar that I'm trying to meet is that they are as successful as like normal business structures. That's that's the bar I'm trying to meet. Right, but I can't reconcile if they are as successful. Then I don't see what what the actual disincentive is. You're saying the disincentive is that people don't invest in them. But yeah. they should invest in them. Well, not necessarily if they're successful. as successful, right? If they're as successful, then you just invest in whichever you know better or whichever you prefer, like for whatever reason. Like, like okay, so in that case, the disincentive is just that they're weird. And people yeah, they're like weird. Them. Yeah, yeah. All right, I would call that. I, I guess you call that disincentive, but it's more like a, a weird sort of social thing. Yeah, not like a structural problem, right? I mean, I mean, sure. I mean, sure. But you could you could alleviate that through structural means, right? If, if we can show that they are, let's say if we can show that they're as or slightly more um, successful in some cases, uh, you could offer like specific like government programs or specific loans for co-ops that would like cater more to like the co-op sort of side of things. Um, I don't know. They're... But I mean, if, if invest like so. In order to justify a, a, poli a government policy like that, hmm. you would have to demonstrate somehow that there is this extra value, and there, there should be there should be a positive incentive for co-ops. I mean, there is, but it's not it's not necessarily an economic one, right? There is a positive incentive, but it isn't an economic okay. one. It's more like a, a democracy one, like um, okay. like a power structure one, right? That right. that that's so that, like my incentive is like my incentive is a is not economic. The economic the, argument the, the is, is simply that, the, the problem is that like in this system that that's a disincentive that they're more democratic. Um, sure. Like like for for example, let's let's say let's say if if you could if you could convince me for example, right? Like I, I'm not I'm not like I'm not necessarily riding or dying on this idea. Like if you could convince me that they would like worker co-ops would somehow like tank the economy or like be very ineffective in a lot of things or like at least in some things, then I would I would I would go as far as to say, well then maybe we should try and figure out like a different way to do this. Like that is not a worker co-op, right? Because like I'm not married to worker co-ops specifically. Okay. Well what is it that you're married to? Um prosperity. Um okay. Like people's uh, I, pros like people's I prosperity. Mean, and that's probably, I mean, we'll probably agree on that, but. Yeah, yeah I mean, should I also say the, the empowerment of like, like. Sure, like people. the empowerment of like, the empowerment and happiness of the most amount of people. Like that's, like, that's what I'm trying to. Um, okay, but I mean, the, the, the whole basis of our disagreement is on whether there should be, you know, worker, like democratic worker businesses or not. Yeah. So. If you're not married to that, I'm not sure. What are you married to that I'm going to disagree with? Well, well, I'm I'm not married to it. I'm just saying I I, I believe that I've I guess previously heard and read about like worker co-ops and and it seems it seems that they are at least as successful as traditional businesses and um, that they would bring upon like other benefits that traditional businesses don't in terms of like the happiness scale. So what because. Are the other yeah, like more democracy and like more power in the hands of like more people rather than like more centralized power. How how is that better? Um, so I mean, so we're talking about a company that is um, where basically the everyone who works there essentially has a vote on the as like the like board members would have a vote. Um, are, well, are you a fan of monarchies? Like shareholders would have a vote. Well, de that... depends on what you mean by like, like there's, there's a lot of different structures that you can go for. Like you don't necessarily vote on every single thing, every single person, right? You, you would vote for. Well, no, but they would elect like the CEO or something like that. Yeah. Right? They would elect like representatives, right? Um, okay. So why is that better um, than just, just being working for a company? 
I, I believe there's a lot of data to show stuff like um, people get very um, like depressed and like this um, disillusioned from like not having any control of like their workplace or like the place that they work. Like if you have more uh, agency in the place that you work, you're generally like happier with your life in general. And like if I think the main argument that people usually make is that um, if if you have if you have a vote in sort of I guess the government that you live under, like the the local municipality, the local like district that you live under, uh, and you don't spend like a great deal of your life like dealing with necessarily with the consequences of that, uh, that you should also have a vote in sort of your workplace where you spend like most of your time anyway. So I'd be happier working at McDonald's if I had a small yeah. vote on mcdonald's corporate policy yeah like corporate policy and like it? workers rights i mean that that leads to like all kinds of positives right so so like being able to vote for um what kind of co what kind of like workers rights you would want like what kind of um benefits you would want uh like what kind of uh, i guess um conditions you would like to work under um stuff like that now, doesn't that create a conflict of interest? Because um, you also have a you know a business relationship with the company, like they're paying you to do work. So if you can vote on their policy, you're voting on the person who's like they have an in, the company should have an interest in, in you know getting those deals. I mean, it's from a you. negotiation, right? I mean, uh, yeah. you, you can call it a conflict of interest, I guess, if you want. You well, the problem class. So the problem is. Possibly. The problem is if that conflict exists, then the invest like so the re normally the people who own equity in the company have the voting power, and you're basically saying that you're proposing to take that voting power and give it to the workers instead of the people owning the equity. Yeah. So the people owning the equity would be would be getting the return from the profits of the company, but they wouldn't have um, voting power over. Oh, there, there, there would be no there would be no other people owning equity in the company oh it, it would just be the workers owning it is that this would be a system like without a stock market like there wouldn't be any external ownership of companies is that also what you're proposing to argue? um no i don't think so well, for co-ops no co-ops absolutely wouldn't be like any external ownership because okay. the problem with that is then you definitely cannot get investment right yeah, I'm not necessarily arguing for that. I mean, I, I think there are different uh, investment structures. Um, I think well, in terms I, I of like, we're like talking about like um, th this would be like a like entirely co-op economy when like you've like like abolished like like capital ownership. Well, even entirely co-op economy, I can imagine one where you can have uh, you know third party investors. Yeah. Or not. Yeah, th th that would be done in like in the form of loans, though, not in yeah, terms exactly. of like ownership. Yeah, yeah. Of like equity of the company yeah um but but the so the form of a loan i mean that's kind of a semantic difference the point is um i mean is the loan the point is the loan is going to have a risk right if the company's profitable the yeah. loan will get paid back yeah. they don't not profitable yeah. They, yeah. they won't so it's not much different than buying stock other than terminology so the point is well, no, because I mean, the, like the difference would be in like how much how much power would be had, I guess. Um, yeah, like if of, you have like majority ownership of stock, you have like ultimate say over the company. Like well, right. it's not and just they are like obligated to return some amount of money to you like within some amount of time. So the thing is, like you have control. Like that that control is valuable to the people who own the stock. It's part of their investment, right? Like they're paying for um, the the fact that they have that control over the company gives them more confidence in that they'll get a return from it. Um, if you're taking that power away from them, you're asking them to trust, you're giving that power to the workers, you're asking the investors to trust the workers to make those choices. And you're saying, okay, loan, like invest in this company if you think the workers will make choices that generate a profit and, and give you a return. Now, if you have, the workers have a conflict of interest that's going to, um, make the investors more skeptical that, that this is a good investment that they will get a return because it seems like the people who are making the choices have an incentive to do something other than 
generate the, make the, the most, most profits. profit period at the expense of everyone else that works for a company. Exactly. Well, yeah, then people, people invest. You think that's so the investors a good have thing, the control though? because you think it's sorry? good though. Do you think it's good to like pay people as little as possible so that they have to be on welfare um, because they can't afford to make a living wage? Do you think that we should just let uh, like giant corporations do that? You're talking about something completely different here. Oh, no, no, I'm not actually. The conflict of interest you're talking about <laughs> is just having a, a little bit more power. Not so enough to saying, change the entire direction, but just enough to like not get completely fucked. So if I'm saying if you have that conflict of interest, then investors are going to be not a to conflict to give you their money. Okay, so I would say then that CEOs have a conflict of interest because they are rewarded based on uh, how much money they save, how much profit they make. So should we get rid of CEOs? Um, how is that a conflict of interest? Because they're incentivized to make the most amount of profit for their sh shareholders. And so they like their money is directly tied to uh, choices that they make. You should say that like, it, what's, what's I think you're talking about short term profit, like at the expense of like long term stability, right? I mean, either way, like it's not really a choice. I, and I'm not even talking about co op. I, I, I honestly, I don't fucking, whatever works. I don't care. I've been, I've never worked for like a large business, but I've been like an employer and an employee and a freelancer. It's well, like, last news, I'm, you're, you're talking about like conflict of interest between the, like the owners and, and whoever's making the decisions. If that's someone other than the owners, right? Yeah. The conflict is whoever's making decisions for the company. Um, their interest is supposed to be the profits of the company because the investors in the company uh, those profits are the investors return. And the are they the most making... important part of it? Isn't it the success of the business itself and, uh, you know, the sustainability of it instead of, I don't know, maybe just giving all of the money to investors and then you need to have a government bailout supposedly when something goes awry. You are all over the place here. I'm, no, I'm actually, these are just point. kind of all just they're they're it that falls with under the umbrella of what so you're here's talking the conflict about. that I'm talking about. Here's the conflict. The conflict mm -hmm. is that investors expect that whoever's making decisions for the company um, have the interests of the company um, in only in mind when they make those decisions because those well, isn't that a goddamn shame? The of the company Won't they be disappointed? Uh, you're making like. I don't know. Like you're making moral claims. We're not even having a moral. Oh discussion. no, no, no! I'm saying that. Does it make sense in society to just do things based on uh, what a few people want, just want, versus what uh, a large amount of the population needs to be a part no of society idea. and to take a part all? in um, uh, capitalism? Annabelle, what's up? Do you think that? Uh, how are you doing? We can I, just you're sleep? so generally, I have no idea. Yeah, what I slept for like ten hours. Actually, I, was so tired. Mm, I, was, yeah, I, thought, I, I think, think that you just okay. So, do you think that? Uh, I'm just messaging. Do you a bunch think of that the most important thing for like the yeah. best? Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess the the most um. Yes, you've been like the most successful way that a a company can be a part yeah, of our society participate <laughs> in <laughs> our job, uh you know get from our <laughs> work because i love the debate and, bros i think you know, do you think it's better for them to, to be able to people. just like take money who, and uh, afford it do you think that's like just the profit motive like i know that's how things are set up now i know that investors are promised a lot but should they be just practically speaking for a society? Is it better that way? I don't know what you mean by practically speaking for society. No, I mean like in society, do you think it has a benefit to all of us for, uh, you know, most of the population to be able to participate in the economy because they have enough money to, you know, just buy normal things and uh, not be super in debt? Do you think that that might be better to, I don't know, society than just letting a few people hoard a bunch of money while other people have to rely on uh, the government and social security uh, safety nets? 
I don't know what you mean by better for all of us. I don't know what you mean. By I mean, old, you I know mean. what I mean, man. I better for all of us. Anything. What, what better for society. What, I'm sorry? I, for who? I mean, society is made up of individual people. So for some you. Better for, some for people me. And worse for others. For How you, you and for me. For okay, so taxpayers. Taxpayers. Isn't it better for taxpayers to not have their money go to people who are underpaid and can't afford to live? Like, shouldn't the employers have to pay them and let them live? Why should we be footing the bill on that? It is better for taxpayers to not have to pay more taxes. Is that what you're trying to get me to say? Sure. What? No, I am saying that the taxes that we pay, a large portion of it goes to uh, people who need food stamps, people that need general assistance. Who uh -huh. wouldn't need those things if they were getting paid enough money to just exist. Sure. So how do we? Okay. So, uh, okay. so? I, I like when, okay. I think people <clears throat> are happier when they make more money. I, I like when people make more Great. money. That's good. I Great. Like that. But only up to a certain point um, after uh, a certain amount of, uh, like financial security, the happiness level doesn't change based on income. I believe it's like $75,000 approximately. Okay, if you say so. I mean, hey, um, I can send you studies if you want. Oh, uh, last news name. I, I think this is probably what's like, why this, is, you, you guys aren't like clicking right now. Like, do, do you think that companies should have any obligation towards the general well being of society? And like like stability of the economy, stuff like no. that. Yeah. No, I don't think that's why anything. not? I think whatever that means, it's not something. It's not a useful. You don't know what it means, topic. and you're already saying no. Why don't you ask for more well, qualifiers? Like we say, obligation. No. How about you? You, you should probably receive for? information a little bit more responsibly before you just throw out an answer. Like who does? I'm, I'm ready to receive that information. You, okay. you should probably you, explain your claims before you. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't the last person to say anything. Them. Again, oh, I, you literally I was, said I was no, and then to, like, you said you like, didn't understand. I was throwing but out okay. there trying like elucidate like uh, the the disconnect you two were having. Is it a disconnect or is it a a willful denial? Do you think that the function of society? Do you think that you do you have a family? I mean, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> I'm not going to hold them hostage. I just mean in general. If you have a family, <laughs> if you have children, <laughs> if you have whatever whatever you have going on. So if you want to like get married, maybe have a couple kids, do you think that the schools that are available in your area should be functional schools that you can send them to and, and not have to send them to private school because of how much it sucks? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Iko, you are the most virtuous person I've ever seen. Congratulations. This isn't virtuous. This is practical. Okay, the more the let me let me talk about the long game here. Here's the long game. The long game is that if there is too much Okay. I, I need a Kleenex. I'm like I'm I'm sorry. Tears are well up here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I I go. <laughs> okay. Listen, I could you you can get in you can get in and yell after. I just <laughs> I gotta finish my, my talk with last username. Okay. I'm uh, sorry too, Iko, but like in all seriousness, the stuff you were trying to bring up was nothing to do with what we were talking about. And frankly, was just a lot of moral grandstanding, uh, and didn't make much sense to me. Listen, okay. Um, j just to be completely clear, um, if, if I'm having a talk with somebody, I, I kind of have to draw a line somewhere and have a talk with that person. So if, if people here? come in, I go, please. Wait, hello. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, why did you take? Why did you move? Okay, it's it's because I was trying to have a discussion with last year's name and and. We okay, weren't... fine. I'm leaving. I'm okay. leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> That's fine. okay. Goodbye. <laughs> we can we can talk after that. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Okay. All right. Have okay. have have fun with that. Good good job. <laughs> okay. So so where were we? <laughs> um, the conflict of interest. So so when I say conflict of interest, I'm not I'm not making a moral. It's not a moral issue. The issue is that um, <clears throat> investors will give money to the company. Okay. And the profits of that company are their return on their investment. So what they care about is that the people making decisions for the company, um, that their only interest is in making profit, right? Sure. Um, the employees, if the employees have all the voting, the power to control the company, then employees are, the investors are expecting the employees to put the interest, the profit to be their primary interest. But of course, employees have their own salaries and perks or whatever as also as their own personal interest. And since those are going to be complementary with the profit, that is a direct conflict of interest. So investors, knowing that the people in charge of the company have a conflict of interest like that, are probably going to consider that a poorly structured company. Well, it depends on what you mean, right? So, 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 um, so having the interests of the company uh, at uh, as a priority doesn't go out the window just because the company is owned by more people, right? Mm -hmm. So, so just because there's like five people owning the company instead of one person doesn't mean that like they wouldn't want to maximize sort of the profit of the company. No, but I mean the the salary of those people or any other benefits that they get is is um, going is mutually exclusive with the profits of the company, right? So like the more they pay themselves, the well, less profit the company makes. I mean, not necessarily. So they have to they have to try to decide between their own interests and the company's interest that they have been that they are supposed to be sure um, but like it is their job to look after sure but like now, you can say that's true for a ceo as well if the ceo yeah, decides to yeah. pay but the difference is that's why they make ceo pay scale with profit instead of being comp i mean it is complementary to profit to some extent but because the ceo is just one guy you know they can afford to give the ceo a raise when the company is more profitable and so on so they give sure. the, make the ceos um pay um correlate positively with profit in order to counter that that uh, conflict of interest. Sure, I mean, I don't, I don't think like uh, as somebody wrote in chat, like I don't think like a worker co-op is gonna is gonna solve like all of these issues over overnight or like cure concepts of of greed and stuff like that. Like I'm just well, saying, it creates a new problem though. That's the thing. Yeah, sure, but but like you you could just do it in the same way that you handle like CEOs right now, and just like to uh, to a lesser degree, right? So like tied tighter pay to sort of the. Um, the well-being of the company, right? But you can't do that with all the workers in the company, though. Well, depends on the company, right? I mean, you can to some extent. Like the the way that the way that uh, because there's going to be many situations. Well, okay, so could you do that? Um, yeah, like the way that Mondragon does it is that it just splits it up into like smaller companies where each like company has their own like cooperative, or like each division has their own cooperative for that division, right? It isn't like a global, like uh, 10,000 people all have like the same whatever uh, rights or whatever to like one big company. It's like it's like a hundred mm -hmm. different small co-ops that sort of go into a big co-op. Yeah. So, I mean, that actually in, in effect sort of reduces the co-op effect, right? By um, making... I'm sure. Sure. Yeah, I would agree with that. Each small little company has more, less people controlling it. Um. But sure, I mean, I mean, could I'm, you? I'm just thinking if you could make worker pay scale with profit for like every worker in the company, um, I'm not sure. It sounds like the economics of that probably wouldn't work out very well. Hmm. Because a lot of and many, a lot of the time, like making profit is about you know pushing, like reducing worker pay. I mean, not necessarily. Like, you make salaries. Well, not, see a salary. Well, not necessarily, not right? You you. Well, not necessarily. Like you, you can, you can, you can, you can increase effectiveness by increasing pay, like in 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 a lot of cases, right? Yeah. So, so it isn't that simple as just like cutting costs as much. I mean, yeah, for the most unskilled workers, probably sometimes, yeah. Like for Amazon workers, probably sometimes. But but even like for Amazon, it can be profitable to like increase the the pay of the workers to get like tangential benefits, right? Like. Um, getting, I don't know, less bad press uh, can, can be like a tangential benefit that isn't like obvious, for example, or something like um, 
uh, if, if the workers uh, are more happy, like they might produce like 5% more if you increase their pay 5% and then it's a wash, but you have happier workers, right? So, I mean. So, I mean, typically, you know, salaries make up a large portion of a company's expenses, like at least half. Um, um, sure. More, right? So, in order to make any, in order to reward the workers in a significant way, um, is going to be a significant expense, which is going to cut into profits. So, um, so like, you know, a typical, like if a company's making like 10% profits, which is relatively, I think the average profit is like 9% or something. Sure. And the workers are getting 50% of the, of the expenses, then the most, then the typical reward for a worker is going to be like an extra, but they can't get all the profits, so they're going to have to get some tiny part of those profits. Most of the profits have to go to the investors. Sure. So it doesn't seem like like the, the bonus for workers is going to be tiny. So they're still going to have a whereas they're still going to be huge incentive to like just give themselves raises, right? So you, I mean, it's not going to be enough. It isn't. It uh, isn't also that, be correlated incentive to counteract. Sure, the, sure, but you can't just like it, it would still be like democratic, right? So I mean, and it would be like all the people voting for like these kinds of things like different different sections voting for like different kinds of things like just because i want a bigger raise doesn't mean that i'm just gonna get it right it isn't how mm -hmm. it's gonna work right so i mean if they were if they're actually smart about it they would have to consider the um the interests of the investors when voting on whether or not to give themselves a raise of course yeah so then it comes down to like does the investor trust all of the workers in the company to make smart decisions about that well, you wouldn't have to trust like all of the workers at the company to make smart decisions. You would just have to trust that they uh, would elect somebody who could make smart decisions, right? And those would will be okay. the people you communicate with. Like for example, like for my co-op, whenever I talk to like investors or or like people with money, like in some form of capacity, like they don't talk to all of the workers. Like they talk to me because I'm the one who handles that, and then my workers trust that I do the best job that I can. Okay, so I'm so what this is going to work out to, like ultimately, it's the investors that the this this process has to please. Yeah. Um, so you're trusting the workers to vote for CEOs who make decisions about the workers' salaries that are in the interests of investors. Well, in the interests of everyone, like negotiation, right? That that fits everyone. Uh, and and the if, argument would be slightly better than like what is now. But investors are going to invest their money in companies that are most aligned with their interests, right? So if the capital comes from investors, then it's, it's the investors that you have to please. Well, I mean, you have to please other people. Sure, sure but, sure, but like capital isn't like static, right? Like uh, there isn't like a static amount of capital that exists, right? I mean, it, like it doesn't have to be a zero sum game. I mean, just because my workers are 10% more happy doesn't mean that um, they necessarily have to be paid 10% more. I mean, they could be paid 8% more, but produce 10% uh, more in return. Or they could uh, they could be paid 10% more, but produce 10% more. And therefore, the company structure could be different, but still as effective as like another company who has uh, a different structure. Okay, so now, like at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, all workers want is is certain things from their employer, like more money or perks or whatever it is they want. Why is this system a better way to get those things than simply the way where you negotiate um, an employment contract where you work and the company pays you, and the CEO decides that? Like, it seems like. I don't see how the, the extra worker democracy helps that at all. If you're expecting the workers to consider, um, to vote for CEO, to elect CEOs who consider the, in the, you know, giving the most profit to the investors while make, while negotiating optimal contracts with workers that get all the workers they need. Why does the workers vote help that? Uh, help that happen better than just letting the investors themselves um, have the voting power. Uh, well, there's a number of different reasons. Like, like it is, it is possible. I, at, at least I think it is possible in my in the system that I'm proposing that you could get for all 
parts for all parties involved, you could get an equal or better outcome than the current system, right? So, so for all parties involved, you get like, an equal or better outcome. So I don't necessarily think that it's it would be a trade off in that sense for the investor. Like the investor could could be more could get more profit from a worker co op because of because of things that are hard to predict. Like because those workers are more effective, and like it's it's hard to sometimes put like a quantitative measure on like how effective workers are. I mean, it's fucking it's hard to describe for me as well. Like. If I'm talking to like an investor or whatever, I mean, I can't just say, well, I have the best workers. We have the best workers. The workers are the best, right? I mean, it's hard to put numbers on like how good somebody is, especially in like a creative field. Um, but you So let's say, of- like imagine you're an investor and you have two different companies that are identical. And one of them is just a sort of normal company where the CEO just dictates, you know, things. To, oh, you're going, you're going works. full robot right now. Uh, can you still hear me? Oh. Yeah. Um, blah blah blah. Yeah, let me just let me just change the server settings. Um, there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, much better. Okay, what are you, so what imagine, are you saying? Imagine you have two companies that you're yeah. considering. You're an investor. Actually, which company to invest in? Like they're identical, but one of the CEOs um, just negotiates, just hires workers, pays them a salary. They work. The CEO makes decides what happens to the company. The other CEO says, "I'm going to let the workers make decisions um, for have some decision making power over the company because I trust that the workers will make the decisions that are in the your interest as an investor." Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, make better and I guess better decisions than than the CEO does. Yeah. So which company is more appealing to you as an investor who's well, just looking to make the best return? Well, so so when you say make better decisions for the investor, what when when you say those words, what I mean, they could make better micro decisions to increase the profits of the company, uh, or in such a way that they work more effectively. Right, which which makes up for the higher pay. It's it's the same argument for like why would you hire an expert in a field versus like a junior in a field to do like a job, right? Because you trust that the expert has some sort of like intangible value there uh, that you can't really necessarily put a price on. Um, but you like even though they're essentially doing the same job, that the expert will somehow do the job better in some sort of way. It's it's so is it just because the workers know have knowledge about their company that the CEO may not have access to? Well, well, not necessarily really? knowledge, more like, I guess, worth ethic, work ethic, and like how happy they are to work in the place that they are, like how much effort they put into their work. Right? Well, why would that not like, I mean, companies have existing mechanisms for getting feedback from workers and sure. making sure they're happy and blah, blah, blah. Why would not why would those mechanisms not be sufficient in general? I mean, they might in some cases, right? like, why like, would you expect why would you expect like the workers being able to literally elect the the executives to be a better mechanism than simply well, letting the executives? I, I think the issue might be that that to some extent we might be talking past each other, right? Because I think I think the question that you should be asking is who is a loser in this exchange? Because I don't <laughs> think the investors are the losers in this exchange. Actually, I think the losers are people who are like middle management or actually like CEOs right now. I think those are the biggest losers in this exchange. Because I think investors are, st- are still going to get what they want out of the exchange. The people who are going to get paid way less are the big CEOs or like the big middle management people who um, who usually like I, are paid more than I guess um, than they I guess would be producing in this in this case because they are paid for their um, accountability. Right. Um. Uh, how, but how are they, so how are they going to be better off? No, they're going to be worse off. Oh, so like, see, so like current, current people who are like CEOs and, um, middle management and those people who are going to be elected instead, those are going to be worse off, but I don't think like the investors are going to be worse off. Well, I mean, the investors are going to choose which company, 
like they're choosing between different companies to invest in. So it's not a matter of whether they're worse off. It's a matter of, is there another, yeah, I, I like think in the investment company that isn't like this and then get a better return because then they will. Yeah, I mean, I think they they would either get a similar or better return is the argument that I'm making. But I, I think that the people who are ultimately going to be paid less are the CEOs and like the middle managers. I think the investors are still going to make the same profits. Um, okay, but I mean, actually, we were just talking. We were talking about workers. Like, I'm I'm not even convinced that the workers get a better deal in this situation. Okay. Um, because as I say, the uh, in a situation where they they're not and they're not a co-op, the workers are negotiating with the company, and the company is trying to minimize to maximize profits by minimizing what they pay the workers, and the workers are trying to maximize their pay by um, using their their work as an exchange or like as minimize work for maximize to maximize pay. Um, in the case where they're voting, in order um, to to the degree that they don't. Uh, vote um, for that same goal on behalf of the company, they, that will cost them investor confidence because the investors know, okay, if the workers are not going to vote, vote to maximize profits at the cost of their own salaries, then this company is not going to be going to be as profitable and I'm not going to invest as much. So in order to have the same amount of investment, the workers basically have to completely disregard their own interests and just pretend they are the company trying to get the best, trying to get the lowest salary. So to the extent that they actually manage to do that, they, they're not benefiting from this relationship at all. Well, they have they, to vote against their well, own it's interests. A, well, to the extent that they do vote into their own interests, they're voting against the company. Sure, interests sure. But it, it might, the but it, it, but there's a, like a lot of different combinations there. Like they, they might, they might, they might get a lower salary, but they have more, like, uh, more to gain if the company is doing well, right? Like their salaries could be tied to the uh, profit of the company, right? So, this, so they might say, well, fuck it, we'll take like a thousand dollars less a month, but the, uh, the incentive is like that you might get like two, three, four thousand dollars more down the line if 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 what we're doing is good, right? Or, but you or can't you, tie you can't tie their you can only tie their salaries to profits um, up to a point because their salaries are the the probably the biggest expense at the company. So well, they don't necessarily have to be, right? I mean, you can change that expense. How? By giving them less salaries. Yeah, but that's contra like so you make more profit by giving them less salary, and then you reward them with higher salary because of the higher profit, right? It doesn't make sense. Well, yeah, when well, well, yeah, it does because like when you when you make money as a company, you can make like expon exponentially more money, right? The more money you have, the more money you can make. So let's right. Say so like, you can you can say distribute some of that profit. You can say like if we make ten percent profit this year, we'll give some fraction of that profit and distribute it into the wages for next year, right? So you'll yeah. get a raise. Yeah. And then there's some profit left over. But why why would that benefit not be something that could be negotiated as part of uh part of a normal employment arrangement? It could be. Yeah. yeah. Like any benefit could be. Yeah. So I'm saying why does why does their being able to vote um give them any sort of like why would that cause them to get any better a deal out of this? I mean, it doesn't necessarily, right? It does not necessitate that there will be a better deal. It is just yeah. that I believe that there is a higher chance that they will get a better deal, right? It it isn't well, like would, a it isn't like a guarantee. Well, why would it even do that? And like, I mean, it could do that, but it it, it would only do that to the extent that they're voting against the interests of the investors. Well, no, profit, right? well, no, we went over that, right? Like it, the investors aren't necessarily standing to lose because just because uh, the way that like profits and like value works, like it is possible to have an increasing amount of value. Like, so if you increase the working conditions by 10%, you might increase the value by like 15%, for example. So, so everybody wins in the long run. Um, okay, but why, like, why couldn't the CEO recognize that? Oh, if we pay our workers more, then we'll actually make more profit. Well, it might not be beneficial for the CEO because the CEO could be making less profit themselves, even though like all the workers could be making more profits for themselves and the investors. But, but it's CEO... easier to tie the CEO pay to profit than it is for the workers. And it's easier for investors to evaluate the CEO than the workers, right? 
Yeah, I mean, it, you definitely doesn't like know every single worker. Sure, like, sure, oh, this- sure. And, and then again, I mean, then again, I mean, uh, like the answer there would just be like, I mean, I, I would say good companies do exist. I mean, <laughs> or, or like decent companies or whatever that do this. But I, I think we would have a higher degree of of good companies in in this scenario because there would be more incentive to create better scenarios for all the workers and not just like the ones at the top. And it isn't like um, a guarantee. Right. It isn't but, it is it's never gonna be a guarantee. But that, that always comes at the cost of, of something though. Like if Yeah. If it it's gonna cost come come at the cost of, of capital, of investment. Well no. No. Like so so the argument that I, I, I think makes sense, uh, or I, at least the argument that I have seen that people have made is that it's gonna get less profit for some individuals, mainly like the ones who are currently like CEOs and like managers and stuff. Um but it's going to create like more profits for the average worker and it's going to be either the same or better for investors um, because like the investor isn't necessarily like interested. Like the, the investor doesn't have an interest that a CEO specifically like one person, a CEO makes more money. Like they just want their profits back and that those profits don't necessarily change if the workers are the same, right? A CEO doesn't care if, if 10 people get 10,000 or if one person gets eighty thousand, and then nine person, nine people get like two thousand, whatever. The, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, but anything that is anything that is a benefit to investors, as in, aka anything that increases profit, the CEO already has an incentive to do without well, any sort of worker demand. Sure, sure, so sure. If, but this, sure, but the CEO can have an. Ins- I'm sorry, I'm like, I, I think I understand what you meant. So, so yeah. this. The CEO can increase the profits for the investor, but also increase the profits for themselves while not increasing the working conditions of the workers. Or the workers could increase the um, increase the working conditions for themselves and the profits for the investor, but not the profits for the one CEO. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's the CEO's conflict of interest that you're worried about. Yeah. Um, and you think that basically the, the executives are sort of rent seeking against yeah. the companies Yeah. currently. Yeah. So, I mean, the executives are highly visible. Um, like, you know, shareholders. Yeah. yeah there is a, a cost. Power over who those executives are. Yeah. Yeah. So why, um, I mean, there I mean, is a cost. You... I, I recognize that there is a cost to being a CEO. Like there is a, mm-hmm. there is a cost to being like the front figure of a company and like being accountable for like if the company fails or whatever. I just think it would be better to spread that out into like the workers themselves. And instead of like having one person with all the responsibility and, and the cost and I guess the gain from being having that, uh, you could just spread that out. So, I mean, so the investors have uh the investors have an incentive to choose a ceo who is going who is not going to have that con- well i mean they have that conflict of interest but they have they, they want to find a ceo who's not going to sacrifice the company's profits for their own salary right um uh, so yeah. and so if you're going to give voting power to workers yeah um and you're saying that the workers you basically want the workers to be the executives but you Um, don't you want the workers to elect the executives so you want the workers to elect executives who will make decisions that um favor the workers instead of favoring themselves well Well, why would that be well not them well it's going to favor themselves as well Right, like they might, mm-hmm. they might get an increased salary in terms of like, let's say a worker is making a thousand dollars. Well, the elected person, because they take on more work and more responsibility, they might make like uh, fifteen hundred instead of like a thousand, just mm-hmm. random numbers. Uh, but they're not gonna make like ten thousand, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it seems like the like you already have the shareholders voting. For the executives and trying to hold the executives accountable just by just by just with oversight that sure. the executives are not basically um corrupt and increasing their own salary at the cost of the company 
Sure, but like you, you can, yeah. But that was that was the argument with like the 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 CEOs can increase their own salaries and increase the profits for the investors at the cost of the workers. Or we can do the reverse thing where the workers increase their salaries um, at the expense of the one CEO and increase the profits of the investors. But but the workers are still electing a CEO. So why would this that CEO be less likely to try to enrich themselves? Why would the worker-elected CEO be less inclined to enrich well, themselves well, the they, the company? Well, well, a few reasons. Like one of the reasons is uh, would be like just they would have less to gain um, because they they wouldn't have as ridiculously high of a salary as they have right now because the responsibility would be spread more evenly. And second off, if they were being corrupt or whatever, then they just wouldn't get reelected. Like they would get voted How off would they, instead. How would they have less responsibility? They have the same responsibility, don't they? Because you would Because you would share the responsibility with the workers. Like all the workers would share some of the responsibility. That's the point, right? Responsibility in the sense of... Like accountability to the investors. Yeah. But um, I don't know. How how are either of them accountable to the investors, though? The CEOs or the workers or... Yeah. Well, in the same way that a CEO right now is accountable, the workers would be accountable. Um, I mean, CEO is accountable now because the investors can vote to get them fired. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. But if the workers have the vote, then then neither the workers nor the CEO are directly accountable to the investors. Well, the CEO, Other than the investors being able to pull their money out. Yeah, exactly. They could pull the funding, and like they could lose their jobs. Uh, okay, but if that's your only mechanism of accountability, then the other, you know, a system where the investors have the investment and their vote is going to be have more accountability. So there's only less accountability in your system. Um, you're asking you're asking the investors to make a much bigger leap of faith, right? Well, um, I mean, it depends on like the like where the alignment is. I mean, I would argue that um, there is a, a higher alignment of interest, like just just in the way that you would argue that uh, investors are very much aligned. If you tie their profit or if you tie the pay up the investors to the profits of the company, then they're very much aligned to make it work. In the same way, if you tie more, like if you tie the workers' um, um, incentives to that of the company, they're also incentivized to make it work in, in the same way that like the in, in, uh, CEO would be, right? So, so in that sense, I mean, yeah, you you could say that they they lose the ability to sort of vote off the CEO, um, but but you can fix that in many ways. Like you could give them a vote at the table, right? Like if, if they if they put money, you can say, well, you, your vote accounts for like some sort of some part of it, and they could together with the workers elect the CEO. Well, I mean, the less control they have, the less value yeah, it would the be, investors, yeah. goes, right? I mean, it's just a matter of it all comes down to money. Sure, sure, but like. I mean, I, I, would, just... I, would, I wouldn't say like less. It depends on like what you mean by valuable. I guess, yeah, obviously. Well, like I say, two same two companies that are the same, but one where the investors have a vote in things, and the other one. They sure, don't. but if they but if the outcomes are are equal or better, uh, it doesn't like it doesn't change, right? It, only if the outcomes are worse, and then in that case, I would say, well, then there are some problems with it that we should fix. I mean, this, it they can only be worse by some amount, right? Like you can't well, you can't do better than than an investor having control over over their investment. I mean, it depends on you what you mean take by away better. Their, you can't make it better by taking away their control. Well, it depends on what you mean by better. Like when I talk about well, better, I mean like economically. Out. Yeah, I mean, I economically better, right? You you can definitely be economically better off. Um, How so? By losing. If you, I don't know, if you if you lose like five percent of control, but your workers are fifty percent more um, um, effective, then you would gain value, but you would lose control. But I mean, whatever you, whatever makes the workers effective, the shareholders could just vote to give the workers that, right? Uh, they could, yeah, they could. So, like, there's no reason for the shareholders to fundamentally give up control. Right. I mean, again, like it's, it's always going to be more valuable for them, for the shareholders to have the ultimate vote than for them to, to not have it. Well, 
Well, not if not if the prerequisite for uh, the workers being more effective is them having a vote. Having ultimate control, like the ability to well, override not the ultimate, Not control. ultimate control, but like some control, right? If that is the prerequisite, then you cannot change that by just giving the investors more power, like inherently, right? It, it's counter. Okay, so you're saying there are going to be cases where it's in the investor's interest to permanently give up their control. Well, some control. Company. I, I guess because this they'll is make like more a, money that way if they just sort of completely yeah. one hundred percent trust the workers. Well, no, wait. I, I feel like, <laughs> I again, we agree. We agree that the only control that they would lose to some extent, and again, I granted you even that we could like give them back some of that control. The only control that they would plausibly lose to some extent would be uh, the control to unanimously decide, like the CEO, which I'm not sure that they currently do to the extent, I mean, yes, all the board of directors do, but like depending on like who's sitting on the board of directors, like there's a lot of like leeway there, right? Like, it is I mean, the way it works like now is there are voting shares and there are non-voting shares. Yeah, so exactly. not all investors. Yeah, exactly. But the exactly. voting shares are gonna be worth more. Yeah, of course, um, of course. And if people yeah. buy non-voting shares, it's because they trust that the people who have the voting shares to make all the decisions. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I just said there's a bit of nuance there. Um, in terms of like when you invest, like how much power you have. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying plausibly you would lose some of the power when you make an investment. Uh, you could like, depending on like what kind of investment that you make, but if the profits are larger because the power that you lose increases your profits, then you could say, well, then it could be worth it. Right. And, and the power that you lose could essentially be whatever meaningless power, um, because Either a you would still have enough power anyway, or 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 like to influence the company in the way that you want, or or b the power could amount to the same effectively. I mean, you can always delegate your power when you have it, right? Sure. Um. <clears throat> so. Um. Just FYI, I gotta go in like ten minutes. So. <laughs> okay, we should probably wrap this up then. Yeah. There's a lot of other things I could touch on here. Yeah, I mean, we but can talk we about like I, I wasn't I wasn't as prepared to have like this talk as well. I mean, I, I can go back and like read up more and stuff. I mean, I, I've heard a lot of good arguments and I obviously I'm invested myself in it. Um, but like I don't have like all of the stats and data prepared and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my basic argument is that um, <clears throat> that um, that what any situation where you give where up you some power is uh is a worse situation than not giving up that power i guess well said any that there's always going to be any giving someone power is it has a monetary value effectively right so yeah. anytime someone has you're saying that someone should have more power they're going to be it's going to be compensated in some other way they're going to lose something else that they sure. have sure um now it may be that it's sort of more efficient to have power in certain places, but it's, it seems yeah. to me that the way things are structured now actually puts power in the right places. It puts it gives people the power over the thing well, that they... Well, sure, but you hopefully also recognize that market failures do exist, right? Like it isn't like it isn't necessarily like the most effective system. Uh, like, have... like and, and particularly what the current system does is it it simply breaks things up and makes them sort of maximally flexible. So like a worker can choose if they want power over their company, they can choose to buy shares and and then have voting power over the company, but they have to pay that cost. Whereas if you're forcing the workers to, if you're coming up with a system where workers vote, they're gonna end up paying that cost anyway, but the difference is that they all have to pay it versus some of them having a choice about whether they want that control or not. Um, sure. Yeah, that's fair. So right, so having a, a co-op essentially. Yeah, but I, I guess I guess speaking, sure. So I guess the counter argument there would just be that many people don't have that choice, like uh, in terms of like just just generally, like they don't have that choice in society, based on like outside circumstances, right? Um, but I, I would grant you that yes, it would be the case that you wouldn't. Well, why don't they have that choice? Because they were born into a circumstance where they don't have the ability to like either a participate in a co-op in a meaningful way or or b just don't have the the money, uh, or like.
like I guess the other resources necessary to like start a co-op. But they would lose that money anyway if you if you had a company. They work for a company where they had to have the vote. They'd end up paying that the same thing, right? Well, no, they wouldn't have the money to start it, like to start engaging in that relationship, right? Like, um, but it's I mean, it's going to end up costing them the same thing ultimately. I mean, they can get the money to, to engage sure. in the relationship. I mean, they want, right? maybe like you just want to buy one share, you can buy one share at a time if you want for like ten bucks. Um, sure. I don't. I don't necessarily think it's the same. So, like buy shares and have like democratic control over like the workplace right i mean that would work but you but just because like i i can go and buy shares of all kinds of companies it doesn't mean like i have any control over what happens with them right i mean companies can work that way um, um yeah it depends how the company works like whether they're selling voting shares yeah they can. But generally speaking there's nothing about the current system that disincentivizes from companies selling voting shares to the workers, no. if that's a good idea, right? And many no, do. I mean, I mean, other other than that, uh, it is the the uh, the incentivized uh, or de incentivized from like the the CEO or like management, like like that. That was the dichotomy that I'm setting up, right? I'm I'm saying, if you're if you're a CEO or like a manager or whatever of the company, then you can you can increase the overall profits of the company and increase your own profits, uh, while increasing the return for the investors. But in a worker cooperative, you could say, well, instead of this one person getting all the like an increase themselves, then that person would be elected and would be incentivized to maybe slightly increase the profits of themselves, but also increase the profits for the workers that voted for them. Um, and in that sense, uh, like the, the there would be a there would be a few people who would stand to lose, but there will be a lot of people who would stand to gain. But why wouldn't the CEO who is elected by shareholders be incentivized to increase the profits to, of the to workers? The returns for the shareholders. Well, the shareholders. Well, yeah. And if the workers buy shares, then then for them too, because the, then the workers are voting for the sure. CEO. I mean, if if all the workers have voting shares, then we're at worker co-ops. I don't know. Yeah, it is. But then, but why not give the workers the choice of whether they want to spend their money on to have voting power, or just make or just take home a salary because like i say if the the if you're forcing them to take voting shares that's going to end up costing them in some other way in terms of well, not of salary. necessarily not necessarily right i mean i mean it is possible to increase the um productiveness to, to the same uh, degree that the cost would be to the company right um i don't think so uh I mean, if you, if you if you, if the if the company pays you ten percent more, but you are you generate ten percent more profit for the company, then that's a wash, right? But to you, it isn't the same. It, it's like a basic like economic theory. Like it's not a zero sum game. It's it's possible for everybody to win from an exchange. But I mean, if if that's true, then the workers would just buy the shares because they're gonna, they're going to make more money that way. Well, you don't necessarily have the capital to buy the shares in the first place, and like, even if you even if you did, it would re require the company structure to be set up in a way that would allow them to. And like the the CEO isn't necessarily incentivized to let you buy voting shares, right? Because they don't necessarily have to believe they that you, they want I mean, the money that you pay for the shares. Sure, sure, but like, uh, but they don't they don't want your vote necessarily. Right. If they don't, if they don't like, like you don't, you don't want to take investment from like just about anyone, right? Like you usually want like smart investment. Um, like if somebody, if if you if you came up tomorrow and said, hey, I'll give you a million dollars and I'll buy you X amount of like, I'll buy a hundred percent of the voting shares, I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily say yes, right? <laughs> just because you're giving me money. Uh, okay. I mean, I guess you would say no to that if you also had shares and you think that the person buying the voting shares is going to destroy the company or something. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. Although if the company is forced to give shares to all their workers, then they may end up in that situation and not be able to avoid it. Sure, they may. Yeah. So they may like, well, if we hire this guy, he's going to vote, make crappy votes for our company. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas the current system, they don't have to make that choice. The person who's the worker has to pay to to get that vote. Sure, but like you, you would you would usually I think the way that it works that like you would usually delegate it to like 
to like reasonable amounts like you you wouldn't expect like some kind of whatever like whatever worker to have like a big plan grand plan of like how all the management is gonna manage and like all of these things like the long-term economic effects or whatever like you would just like elect people who you believe would have like your best interests in mind um right just like i mean why not like that's just like basic democracy right right so you can have set up a system where where you basically pay people a little bit less but you give them voting shares you pay your workers a little bit less, but you give them all voting shares, or the, the same, company, that's or the same, and give them all voting shares. Um, but that's going to cost you capital. Well, not necessarily, so, right? You you can you can generate more capital because you have now voting shares, so you have more incentive to to work harder or more effectively. Um, just just because of the feeling of control over the company. Yeah. Like the, the, the uh, feeling, the feeling that that amazing. you are now responsible as well uh, for what happens. But, I mean, I mean, th- this is like. But your investors have less of that feeling. So um, yeah, less. yeah, a little bit less, yeah. But but if but if they also gain more profits, then I would say that's like a win win win, right? So like, I mean, it, why do you think that the the feeling of control is worth more to the workers than it is to investors? Because the investors. Saying, right? Because the investors the feeling is worth more to the workers, the, so they because, will generate more profit. Because the investors aren't producing the labor, right? They aren't. They aren't the ones working on the the company. They're just like managing to some extent. If they're like voting investors, but that doesn't be, explain be, be why the, ring of logic and the feeling of control will be worth more to them. Pixie, hey. so, yeah, Pixie just rated me with 77 viewers. Thank you so much, Pixie. I, I'm just about to close my stream, actually. But thank you so much for the raid. <laughs> um, I'm just wrapping up a, a discussion that I have with last username about worker co-ops. Um, it seems to me the feeling, the control is worth amazing. most to the people who, whose profit is affected by the, those, those decisions, which is everybody. But the yeah. investor's return is determined by those that control so yeah. it seems like it would be perfectly valuable to them right i mean yeah but but again i mean if if, if you could say that the same amount of uh a return could be generated for the investors or more the same or more then they would stand to lose nothing they or not nothing they would stand to lose no profit they would stand to lose a little bit of control um that is to say the control over or the unilateral control over the ceo but I, I mean, if if that's if that's a trade off that they're they could be making in terms of like gaining more profits in the long run, then it wouldn't necessarily be like a bad trade, right? Right. So in order to convince and to maintain the same level of investment while transferring voting power from the investors to the workers, you're going to have to convince investors that workers make that the control in the hands of those workers is worth more than control in the investors' own hands. Yeah, like, like some giving amount. up their control. Yeah, some they're actually like not, get not, better decision based. Yeah, yeah, like not all control, obviously, but like some control. And like whatever dis- whatever decision whatever decisions they would make, whatever control they have is not as valuable as the workers just knowing that they have control and therefore that they'll work harder and care more about the jobs and make more profit. So they yeah. literally have to give up Wait, control. Uh, just just a, like have you ever have you ever like um, tried selling something to investors? Mm, yeah. uh, this is not like a <laughs> it just yeah because because uh because actually there's a lot of investors who don't want a lot of control like they actually they, they're yeah, they're yeah. sort of yeah they're investing in like a team and then they are sort of hands-off investors and they just want to see like yep. the profits uh, like at every quarter or whatever um, yeah for sure yeah yeah so like these people i would say these people are prime investors for like a, a worker co-op because because they, they they essentially trust that like the workers or or the people who are representing the workers have sort of know what they're talking about and like know that they are able to generate like the profits that they say they will without like but even if they even if they don't have control themselves they may still be um trusting that other people who other equity holders do have that control that they're giving up yeah right and they and would equity goals with the same interest as them right like the they yeah. all they're all making money from the same the same number on the the balance sheet the profits right yeah 
whereas workers are not. Well, they could be, right? If their profits are tied to the profits of the company as a whole. Well, it, I mean, if they're, the workers could be entirely paid off of profits, but then they're, they're not, I mean, then they're sort of investors who are working in exchange for investment. Yeah, yeah. But like I say, they could be that by just spending all their, their paycheck on stock. I mean, sure, but but that isn't the, like then then you don't have any money to live, right? I mean, obviously, there's like a balance there. Uh, well, they have dividends, they have profits. Sure. Um, like, depending <laughs> on like when the profits come or whatever. I mean, I don't necessarily like I I, I don't I don't disagree with like the the critique that you're making. Um, and I do think that there are some people who would lose out on this arrangement. I just don't think it would necessarily be the investors. I do understand sort of the concept of like them losing a bit of control in terms of like who the CEO could be, but you could alleviate that to to some degree. I think, but by just by giving them like a part of the vote, or like to some degree, like including them in the process. I, I like practically, I think there's solutions for this, um, but obviously, yeah, they wouldn't have unilateral control. But also, I think it like it is uh, it is evident. I think just logically, and I think there's also studies that prove this that when people have more control over their workplace, they're also more effective. I believe there somebody said something about like um, that worker co-ops have yeah nine to nineteen uh, percent greater levels of productivity, and like uh, those levels of productivity could could outweigh the. Ex um, increased costs of like having a worker co-op. Um, yeah, but it, it, I mean, it just seems to me that the current system of having people pay for their shares to give them votes um, is sort of optimally flexible and allows for the system that you're describing to emerge if it was actually in the interest of the people. Like, like the system, it would emerge if it was actually in their in the, in the workers' interests to have those those voting shares, then they would go and buy them. Whereas sure, but I, by forcing the matter, you, there might be workers who don't want a voting share and would rather just take home the extra money in exchange in lieu of that. They don't have that option. All right, that's fine. Yeah, I I think uh, I think that's a good note to end it on. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Cool. It's good. To, um, hard to find anyone to talk about this stuff that doesn't turn into like. Um, <laughs> where we're not just talking past each other and yeah, and go off into uh, yeah. I mean, I'm I mean, ultimately, I'm interested in, again. Like, I like I'm solely interested in like creating a better world for the most amount of people. So, I mean, again, if if we could like logically deduce that this wouldn't be the case with this system, or that it would be worse, then obviously I wouldn't advocate for it. I would try and find like a better system. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean that is fundamentally my interest when I'm talking about economic matters. Just yeah. All right, everybody. 